Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for the week ending Friday, April 5th, 2019. Well, we finally had a resolution of that 282-ish level on uh, SPY. We closed a solid green candle above it. Uh, as I shared my thoughts recently, uh, there are some, some you know, uh, negatives. It's a net positive. Price always comes first, hands down. Volume, divergences, everything else is a distant second. So uh, that, uh, you know, you can't take that as anything but bullish as long as prices remain above there. You know, and as I talked about personally, uh, it's a, 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 a breakout that I'm not chasing for the reasons I'll get to here in a second. Uh, but I uh, did want to point that out. We finally, after uh, this is the sixth week of trading on that level, uh, or well, we had five previous weeks and we got above it and closed above it. So check mark there for the bulls. Uh, the things that, uh, you know, warrant some caution. We're still well below the primary uptrend line. Uh, and you can, I have different trend lines on SPY. This is a weekly chart, by the way. Um, but by all counts, just about all of the different variations of the trend line, we are still below those trends that we broke down uh, last quarter. And you can see this one coming off. There it is, you know, coming off the uh, left of the chart. Here, we'll go back even farther. And that one comes off the bottom. There's your bull market uptrend line right there. So we haven't even back tested yet. That's uh, that's bigger picture stuff. But again, near term, we zoom back down. We look at uh, that level. And then let's take a look at the daily chart. And I really want to get to the 60 minute charts. So here it is. And as I've said uh, often, you know, uh, breakouts that occur uh, A, overbought, and B, with divergences, have a considerably higher rate of failure. So uh, on top of that, oh, and C. So we have A, B, C, overbought, divergences, and extreme low volume. We Volumes have really tapered off this week. Uh, we had one of the, we had the lowest volume uh, day of the year earlier in the week. It was Tuesday. Today, let me look at another monitor here. SPY did... Uh, today, volume 55 million shares versus an average volume of about 80 million shares. Uh, so that's better than, that's about less than 66%, two-thirds of regular average volume. And QQQ did a total of about 25 million shares versus average volume of 35 million. It's so also about two-thirds of average volume today. And that's just typical to what we've seen the last few days. So, um, you know, those are not guarantees. Remember, price comes first. But the other things you that come behind that are volume. You want to see breakouts confirmed on above average, usually one or a half better times of average volume. And again, it just... Uh, uh, it's not a failure yet. It just shows that we have an increased rate of failure. So we've been focusing, or at least I have for the last couple of weeks here, on anything that's not highly correlated to the broad market, auto parts, stocks, commodities. Um, oh, what else have we looked at? Shippers today uh, and some other things like that. So uh, there's money to be made in the market, and there's you know certainly gone up. We had a, a pretty nice streak if you look how many green candles. Um, but this week, since that gap up right here, it's just been a slow grind up on low volume. So again, uh, take it for what it's worth, and we'll we'll, we'll see this uh, how this uh, continues tomorrow. But let's look at the futures real quick. That's uh, where you know the the really the micro levels that uh, I'm zooming in on. Uh, if you recall in yesterday's video, uh, we covered the ES and S uh, NQ. This is NQ, the Nasdaq 100 futures, and the levels I was highlighting there. Uh, was this line right here which we had just taken out before and I said this would be our next support and dip buyers could step in at 75, 19, 50. We hit it to the button and then reversed uh, whereas uh, anybody wanting to short would need to wait to see a break at that level. That would be your next sell signal. That never came. So we basically bounced, hit minor uh, support. We tagged it perfectly, bounced so far. Um, we don't have, you can see divergence lines drawn here. They're not yet um, confirmed because here's the previous high. So if the future is over uh, on Sunday or Monday uh, when they open again after, you know, they close here soon, uh, you know, there's still very much the potential. These divergences just continue to build like I talked about. So uh, same story holds. This was support before. It's our still our first support level, uh, wherever that was, about 75 65 or so, 75, 64, and then again that's 75, 1950 ish level, and then you can see everything below there. So that's it. We haven't broken down yet. Uh, we didn't do it yesterday nor today. And then ES, uh, let's jump over to that one real quick. On that one, I had mentioned this line right here. It's not marked. Um, there's a level about 2873, 
and at that time in uh, the video we were testing it and you can see as I say you want to see either an impulsive break below or a 60 minute close below neither of which we had so that that support level held there and we had another pop up uh, we didn't even go down to that next support remember NQ hit that support level below which I had marked and ES never even broke the minor support yesterday so we had a breakdown of the wedge uh, you know had potential to take that level out in that one but it didn't do it so we pushed up made a marginal new high and we're still watching those levels ES definitely does have divergence as you can see there the divergence continues to extend uh, and has been building from that point but these are really the the divergences I'm watching right now so again to be continued next week and uh, we'll have to go from there on the futures and the other thing I told you I'm keeping an eye on right now uh, for any cues of the broad market is LQD which uh, the two big uh, corrections over the last year in 2018 uh, were triggered on a breakdown right here and uh, right here uh, both breakdowns in LQD so recently we put in a divergent high right there um, but I mentioned we had a gap right here and uh, we can certainly come up and so far that gap you know we tested almost a perfect uh, test remember gaps act as resistance and support when tested from above and below uh, so we tested the top of this gap from above and uh, the bottom of the gaps a little bit below there as well as trend line support so we watch that trend line uh, as I said yesterday this, this we can certainly see another thrust up here because the one thing about it is we reverse just shy of a really well-defined resistance level about 119.68 again that was that key it was resistance here see that little reaction and it was very good support there and that is what sparked almost to the button when the uh, investment grade corporates here broke down in late January that's when the market broke down we had that first big correction back in 2018 and then we had a support shelf here and same thing happened there and that's where the October highs occurred so uh, we'll watch this and like I said um, you know can almost put equal odds slightly favoring a bump up because I'd rather see us kiss and fulfill you know that back test that uh, resistance level from below then go on and uh, put in you know just extend these divergences something like this come up again hit it come up again but we'll watch those so right now really we're we're still in an uptrend and we're still well above the uptrend line uh, so we don't have any sell signals just uh, the divergences at this point but remember they're not sell signals just merely an indication that a, an impending trend change is likely so we'll watch this one we'll watch those micro levels if you will on the 60 minute futures charts uh, watch those next week and you know at this point of course like I said you get that close to highs we're still not at the uh, all-time highs on the S&P or the NASDAQ but uh, the closer you get that tends to act as a magnet so there's your there's your high right here and we're not too far from it but like I said volume that's very suspicious it's certainly a breakout but uh, you know we're looking at the lowest trading volumes of the year so far so what that tells me is uh, it seems like the sellers have just left the building the shorts have given up uh, there's not a lot of selling pressure and when you have very low volume it doesn't take a lot in either direction a little bit of buying will lift the markets or a little bit of selling will push them down when when volume slow down so right now you just have more buyers in the market in the last few days um, so you have bullish price action but uh, not confirmed with a lot of uh, other things like volume and again uh, called into question as long as these divergences are intact they can get burned through that's certainly a possibility PPO is pointing higher that's a momentum indicator um, but as I said uh, much more often than not breakouts to all-time highs you want an example one it's right here on this chart uh, here we had big divergences building this was your previous reaction high or previous all-time high, I believe um, there was it tested again we failed the first attempt we broke out um, this was a cheerleading party for the Bulls it was short li it lasted you know a few weeks maybe even what is that a month or so there um, but that's a failed breakout why did that breakout to new highs fail well when you had the divergence and you were overbought at the time so uh, we'll see if that plays out again or not um, but we need sell signals and we don't have any right now so uh, as long as that continues uh, like I said we'll kind of avoid broad market uh, index longs whether long or short because the risk reward to the upside isn't favorable and we don't have any sell signals to the downside so as soon as we do maybe we'll jump back into those yeah.
And uh, until then, focus on uh, some things with better risk reward profiles that we're looking at uh, uh, things other than the broad market. All right, we'll wrap it up here and to be continued next week. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great weekend.